So this is a review session for the last chapter in your A-level syllabus, nuclear physics. So in AS, we only focus on the constituents of a nucleus and an electron. Okay, we're not going to focus on the processes. We're not going to focus on radioactivity. All that will be in A2. So what you need to know in your AS, number one, the first idea is the Rutherford Alpha Scattering Experiment. Uh, this one. Okay. So basically, it's just understanding the effect of the experiment and what are its implications. Because in this experiment, we will have a few types of reading. The first one will be most of the alpha particle is undeflected. Now, number one, are all shoot through. Okay. Some of it will be deflected at small angles, number two. So come close enough to the nucleus, and then the nucleus is positive, and the alpha particle is positive, so they will push each other away, and it glances off to the side. But if it's a head-on collision like this, it will be deflected at large angles. Okay. So based on this, right, you actually need to know the observation and the conclusion. Because if you don't know the observation and conclusion and you don't know how to match them, then sometimes you cannot do paper two questions, you know, because they can say that, oh, it is observed that most alpha particle passes through undeflected. What conclusion can you make? And then you say, oh, because nucleus is positively charged, then cannot lah. Most alpha particle passes doesn't mean that the nucleus is positively charged. It just means that the atom is mostly free space. Okay, or some particles are deflected, some, very few. Then the center of the atom is very small, okay, because there's very few, and it's also positively charged. Okay, and even fewer particles are deflected at large angles. But if it's large angles, it means that it is very dense. If, if not, or then the nucleus will just absorb in the hydrogen. Okay, so you also need to know the structure of an atom, generally speaking. But the values of the mass and the charge, you don't really need to know uh, because it is given to you in the first page of your data booklet. Lah, okay. So structure of an atom, it consists of a bunch of nucleus, nucleus in between, and then you've got electron few few outside in the orbital. This is of course not the perfect model, lah, right? So you should you should know where to find the value of u. Okay, proton and neutron are assumed to be one U. Electron is kind of small. This value can find in your data sheet all these values. The charge is quantized. We all know this, no big deal. Please remember how to convert from Joule to E-volt in case you're asked to do some calculation. Okay, and there are a few types of nuclear reaction. Okay, types of nuclear reaction are alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay. So alpha, beta, and gamma. You need to know the difference law. Um, basically, not just the property and the ionizing power, but also the fact that uh, beta, there are two types. Okay. One thing that students tend to forget is that beta is the one with the range of Ke. Okay. Because it's very light. All right. So the rest is. Uh, things that you should know, la, like alpha is 4,2 helium. This is an electron. This is a positron. Okay, this is an electromagnetic radiation. Uh, like a type of one of the light wave. Okay, so this one, mm, objective. Uh, what else you need to know is actually like all chemistry thing, you need to be able to balance the equation. If you cannot balance equation, it's very hard to do questions from this chapter. But if you've been doing this in chemistry all the time, then this is nothing. Okay, and also to be able to memorize the alpha, the beta decay. So I tend to tell students the beta decay got two type mark, all right? You memorize them together. Lor. So one is neutron become proton. One is proton become neutron. Okay, so let's think about balancing the proton number and the nucleon number. This is one one, this is one zero. Okay, footnote, you should obviously be able to, okay, this is for those people who don't take chemistry. Lah. The number on top here 
this is what we call a nucleon number, which is the total number of proton and neutron in a nucleus. Okay, what about this number down here? This number down here is our proton number. Anybody want to guess what does a proton number represent? That will be the number of proton in the nucleus. Okay, you should be able to define these two. Last time I can skip one because everyone take chemistry. But now I notice not everyone take chemistry. Okay, I define. You also need to be able to define what are isotopes. It has the same proton number. Different nucleon number. Okay, when I say same proton number, it means that you have the same number of proton. It also means that it have the same number of electrons. So it will have the similar chemical properties. Just the mass is slightly different. Okay, so to balance this, I need to minus one, man. So I need a beta, I need a negative one here so that one plus negative one is zero. Okay, and then this one is zero. So this one is called the beta minus decay. Okay, which also happens to be an electron. Plus, so electron is a particle, then we will have to add with a neutrino. So this is an anti-neutrino. We call this the electron anti-neutrino, but neutrino itself is good enough. So our friend here is particle. So the anti-neutrino is an anti-particle. So just think about their combination. They should come one particle, one anti-particle. Which means if we have proton becoming neutron, so this is one, one, this is one, zero. To balance this, we of course must have zero plus one. Right? So this is beta plus particle or beta positive or beta plus decay. This is an antiparticle. There is no such thing as a positively charged electron. Electron is negatively charged. Positively charged electron is like saying there's a coal fire. There's a dry water. Understand? So this is the electron neutrino. No anti-neutrino. So this one is a particle. And the reason why beta has a range of Ke is because of this neutrino. Neutrino will share some of the Ke of the beta particle. Okay, range of Ke. Due to existence of neutrino. All right, you don't have to explain the one in the bracket. It's just added explanation so you can remember. All right, so once we talk about the radiation, uh, if you look at past year questions, sometimes they will ask you to identify the type of radiation based on the equation given. Lah. So let me see if I can find one reason one. Mm. Da, 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 da. Okay, so we're going to do some past year questions. Normally, we will be in the objective. Uh, short chapter. Uh, okay, like this one. Actually, important if you never take chemistry. Which two nuclei are isotopes of the same element? So if we talk about isotope, it should have the same nucleon, the same number of uh, proton. Okay, so this means I need to find the number of proton. Let me push this down. Okay, so in order to find the number of proton, in case you're wondering where this question is from, it is from ON20 paper 1-3. So in order to find the number of proton, we need to minus uh, this is the 
more direct way. La. There are some hacks that you can do, but let's not hack here, hack there first. So we will take 10 minus 5 is 5, 10 minus 6 is 4, 10, 14 minus 6 is 8. Is it 8? Yeah, 16 minus 8 is 8. So we need two things with the same proton number. This one, no. And different neutron number. This one, no. So R and S, no. The answer is D. Okay, so you find the number of proton. Uh. Okay, minus. All right, in a nuclear physics experiment, a nucleus S collides with a nucleus MO, molybdenum and strontium. I have no idea what these things are. The nuclei combine together and immediately emit a single alpha particle. What you need to know is alpha is 4, 2. So it's time to do some accounting. Let's say this is A, this is Z. So 32 plus 94 is equal to A plus 4. You can find your A though. And then at the same time down here, 16 plus 42 is equal to Z plus 2. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this number and this number will be equal to this number and this number. Balancing chemical equation. If you don't know how to balance because you don't practice, because you needn't take chemistry, please go and do more questions. Those people who take chemistry, they can do this in their sleep. But if you do science com or you do econs and you feel a bit left out in this, well, econs a bit hard for me to find the connection with you with physics. La. Graph, but for the com science people, don't worry, your break will come soon. One, two, two. Wait, is it? Did I do? Oh, no, no, no. This is minus. So this is 56. My bad. So one, two, two, fifty-six. The answer is eight. Okay. So this is what I meant by we gotta know how to balance the equation. And sometimes, um, depending on the type of questions asked, they can ask you this kind of graphs. So I'm going to just pull out a graph with the proton number and the nucleon number one just to try. This one is from May, June 17, paper 1-1. One, one. Objective one. Uh, very seldom this one come out in structure because structure will come out in combination of other stuff. Give me a sec. Pull this up. Okay. So here we have a radioactive nuclei. It's formed by beta minus decay. Okay. The nucleus then decay by alpha emission. So there are two process here, process one, process two. Which graph of N nucleon number plotted against proton number shows the beta decay followed by alpha emission? So for beta decay, right? Let's say, let's say you start with nucleus X. This is A, this is Z. You want to create Y and then you got beta. Beta minus, right? So here will still be A. Okay, but down here, what happened to your Z? This will be Z plus 1. So plus 1 minus 1, you get back Z. Okay, balance the equation. Z plus 1 minus 1 is equal to Z. Hmm. So your proton number must go up by 1. Which one shows a proton number go up by 1? This one, no? This one all go down by 1, what? You can see, it go down... This one, my this is let's say this is ninety three. Then it become ninety two. Cannot la. This one ninety one become ninety two. Ding ding. Z plus one. This one also same law. All cannot all to the left. So the answer is B already. But let dub let's double check. Now we have Y. Okay, so let's say Y is P Q la to make my life easy. This is process two. Okay, and then I have a uh, alpha emission. Alpha is four two. Okay, you tell me now what should this be? It would be p minus four. Okay, and your z value or your proton number will be q minus two. So we need to minus two. Now this one minus two. What see? This one minus four. Eh. This one minus three. So weird. This one minus two. Okay. So the answer is b lah. Right. That's all. This is what I mean by you got to know how to do the graph. There are quite a few in the objective. You just 
browse through the topicals that you should be able to find them. OK, um, now we're going to move on to the land of fundamental particles or very, very small things, things that are smaller than a proton. You think proton is small? We have smaller stuff, OK? So we're going to talk about the fundamental particles, which is the very last part that you need to know in nuclear physics, OK? So for this part, we're going to talk about the standard model of elementary particles, OK? And I will just once again show you the table. This is a table for the standard model. Do you need to know the table? Uh, a bit, lah. They won't give you one, sorry. OK, so the main character or the main quark you need to know is the up quark and the down quark. OK, up quark, everything here. OK, hang on. Everything on this top row, this top row has a charge of positive two-third electron. So up, chum, top. Nice, nice names, okay? Everything down here, down, strange, and bottom, this one has a charge of positive one-third electron. This is the more important thing that you should know. But of course, if you have particles, you also have anti-particles. So this means oh, this charge here, all of this charge, be negative two over three E. And all of this charge will be positive 1 over 3e. It's like opposite day. Normally, I'm positive. Now, I'm negative. Normally, I'm negative. Now, I'm positive. Just flip. Okay? So, these are quarks. Okay? Quarks are what we use to form uh, matter. Okay? So, I want to talk a little bit about the matter and antimatter classification. All right? All these are from your notes, by the way. I didn't change anything got a bit chat chat but never mind okay so when it comes to matter and antimatter right when you think about this matter is everything on this side and matter we can classify into two hadrons which are called the heavy ones okay leptons are called the light ones h for heavy l for light and hadrons are affected by strong force so what is strong force and what is weak force? There are four fundamental forces. Lah, okay. So if you peer into the proton, let me put this here. You peer into a proton, you will find that a proton consists of two up quarks and one down quark, such that when you add the charge together, two-third and two-third for up, plus negative one-third for down will give you one E. Okay, there'll be two-third, two up quark and one down quark. And then later on, if let's say you want to find the fundamental particles of a neutron, you are talking about two down quark and one up quark because two-third plus negative one-third plus negative one-third is zero. Okay, so what ties this thing together? Because they don't like each other one. It's like, hey, I am positive two-third. You are positive two-third. Can you, I don't like you. Can you go away? So what ties them together is the strong nuclear force, which acts on quark. The weak nuclear force will act on all other fundamental particles. The electromagnetic force will act on everybody, including you and me, and gravity will also act on everybody. Lah. If not, how are you sitting down in your chair? Okay, so these are all your five, four fundamental forces. Recently, physics feel like they have discovered a fifth fundamental force, and I'm like, okay, I will study that later. <laughs> all right, so hadrons are the heavy ones acted on by strong force, okay? So they normally consist of quarks, either one quark and one anti-quark. We call them meson or baryons, where they consist of three quarks. Known baryons in your syllabus will be proton and neutron. No? Up, up, down, up, down, down. Leptons are the light one, not affected by strong force. Okay, strong force is the force that holds the nucleus together. Okay, and leptons consist of electrons and neutrino. So if you go back to your table of fundamental particles here, all your leptons is this green color one. You have lepton, you have anti-lepton. Everything here is the anti-particle. So when we go on to matter, right, there's also antimatter. Okay, 
antimatter, we have the antihedron and the antiheptons. For antihedrons, we have anti meson, anti baron. Everybody becomes anti lah, okay. And the only thing that change is on the symbol, we will add a bar, a bar on top to indicate antimatter. So the first time you encounter antimatter is here. That's why I draw a bar on top of the electron antineutrino to differentiate between the particles that are particles and then antiparticles. You see the bar here, bar, 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 bar. Means why electron no bar one? Uh, electron mm, is the first antiparticle that we discover. Uh, so he get founder, right? We don't even call it an anti-electron. We call it a positron, positive electron. Uh, founders, to get the founders game, founders cup. You see all of this got bar on top one. This one no bar. Right bar E, I think people can understand. But yeah, that's it. So you need to know the classification and how to combine them so that you get whatever it is that they want you to find. Lah. All right. So we're going to do a past year question now, maybe one or two before we call it a day. Wow, Misty talk very long. Well. Mm. ON20, I think this is paper 2-1. Let me double check. But I think we're done. All of this is what we need. Just make sure your your reaction hall should obey all the principles lah, of conservation of mass of particle and all that okay right so i'm gonna continue we and you don't have to worry uh, the question all oh, very easy one you don't cheat your feelings but you see what is not a fundamental particle neutron no <laughs> okay which statement is correct ah <sighs> Leptons cannot be proton. Proton cannot be quarks because proton got three quark. Electron cannot be hadron. So A. No? Very easy. Easy. Okay. So all of this is, is can do. If you know, you know. You don't know, you don't know. No. But they're all pretty manageable. Okay. So I'm going to pick and choose a few before I continue. Sorry. Let me talk about the quarks a bit more. Because they're quite new, but you really should try past year questions. Okay, so quad question could look something like this. This one is four different hadrons. Okay, one of the hadron is sigma plus, has a charge of positive E, where E is the elementary charge. Which hadron could be the sigma plus particle? So you need to check the charge accordingly. So up, positive two third E. Down is negative one third e. Strange is negative one third e. We need to total up the charge, law. So this down is negative one third, negative one third. Strange is negative one third. So this total charge is negative one e. Eh. Okay. Down, strange, strange. Also same lah. Negative one third. Everybody is so wrong, law. I think I need some up quark, some positivity in my life. Okay. So it can be up, up, strange. 2 third plus 2 third, strange is negative 1 third. This is how you get 1 e. Okay, questions will normally look like this. Okay, let's look at ON20. Paper 2, 1. State the similarity and the differences between a down quark and an anti down quark. How interesting. Similarities and differences. Okay, so can I, I mean, this one, uh, sometimes students, they, they don't know how to write. They study a lot already, but then when it comes to this kind of similarity and differences, uh, although they study a lot about the properties, they kind of don't really know what to mention. I think the first similarity is the fact that they are both fundamental particles. Can you say that? There are many things to write. Lah. You can say that they are both fundamental particles. I write all the possibilities. Both fundamental particles. Okay, they have the same mass because they are still quarks. Okay, they have the same magnitude of charge. Opposite polarity, but same magnitude. Okay, differences, you will have, you say they have the opposite sign. You can say sign or polarity 
of charge. Or you could say one is matter, one is anti-matter, anti-matter, or do not matter, no lah. Hang on, this is paper 2-2. Two, two. Okay, for the nucleus aluminium 25, state the number of neutrons and the number of protons. Okay, so this one is number of protons, so 13. Number of neutrons will be 25 minus 13, 12. Okay, hang on. Is this 2, 2 or 2, 1? Let me double check. Ding, ding. Okay, this is 2, 1. Sorry, yeah. keep changing. I do it. See too many. Look at the screen too long already. Nah, 2, 1. Okay, show that the charge is this much. Well, this thing, nucleus, has 13 protons. One proton is 1 plus. So it'll be 13 times 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 19. So you just show this, you will get 2.1 times 10 to the power negative 18. Let me try. 13 times 1.6 is 20.8. You want to flex a bit, you put 20.8 long. Or 2.8, 2.08. Okay, which is 2.1 times 10 to the power negative 18 coulomb. So the nucleus in B is moved along a straight line from A to B in a uniform horizontal electric field. So this is very common that they will take something from chapter 26 and combine it with electric fields because these are all short chapters. Okay. So electric field strength E is this much. Calculate the work done to move the charge from A to B. Okay. So when you move charges from A to B, right, what we are looking for is delta V. If you have done chapter 17 in your A2, it will be pretty obvious that you need to look for delta V. And when you move from A, B to A, this is your delta V. Okay. So there are a few ways to do this. You could say work done, W is equal to Fs, and you can find the force. So if you want to find the force, you have the electric field strength. Okay, let's try to find the force first. W is equal to Fs, but this F is equal to QE. Okay, please make sure that F and S is parallel. So you need to think about where the direction of the force is. This is positive charge. So the direction of the force is in this direction. So you should take this force, multiply by the parallel distance, which is 4. Okay, now we can substitute. The charge was 2.1 times 10 to the power of 18. The electric field strength is 11 kilo. So 11 times 10 to the power of 3. The distance was 4 cm. So 4 times 10 to the power of negative 2. This will give you 9.2 times 10 to the power of negative 16 joule. Okay. Um, alternative would be work done is Q delta V. Okay. To find the change in potential, I need to find delta V from here to here. But E is equal to delta V over D. So to find delta V, I will take E times D. Can? So I'll put here Q times E times D. Then I notice that this one and this one will substitute the same thing. Okay? So the answer is the same lah. QE, QE, S and D is this one, not parallel delta V. All right. Okay, so that's it for Varian 2, 1. And again, we are at Varian 2, 2. So as usual, there are some similarities across the Varian. <laughs> so these two, the answers are the same. The only difference is this electric field drawing. So here we create a uniform field. You can see the spacings are all the same. But for this one, I, uh, where I got the same spacing? Okay, draw an arrow to show the direction of electric force acting on the stationary electron. Okay, so this, this electric field is pointing to the right. This is an electron. So obviously the electron will experience a force in this direction because it's a negative charge. Ma. So you draw like that. Lo. If you are a bit uh, concerned, then you have to make sure that this one kind of fits the trend of the line. But it doesn't matter. It's only one mark. Just make sure you draw an arrow pointing to the 
right side can already. Okay. Electric field causes the electron to move from its initial position. Describe and explain the acceleration. <laughs> Suddenly kinematics happen. Acceleration of the electron due to the field as the electron moves through the field. So I will say that the electron is moving to the right. One bigger. Let's think about the acceleration. If we want to talk about acceleration, we must talk about force because, you know, F equal ma. So when the electron moves to the right, okay, the electric field strength increases. How do I know? Nah. The line here is closer. Closer lines, closer electric field lines, stronger field. Okay, so the electric field strength increases. Hence, Electric force increases. So, the acceleration of the electron also increases. You feel like uh, feel like it, or you want to, you can put bracket. F is equal to QE, and this bracket F is equal to MA. So when E increase, F increase, when F increase, acceleration increase. So whenever you want to explain acceleration, I will emphasize this again when I talk about kinematics, always use forces to explain forces or net force. Okay. Next, a stationary alpha particle is now placed in the same electric field, in the same initial position. Compare the initial electric force with the initial the electric force acting on the alpha particle with the initial electric force. So we know F is equal to QE and your E didn't change. This thing is constant. But this Q we times 2. So the electric force, they ask you to comp just compare the force. Don't go talk about acceleration. Don't go and talk about work done. All that. No, you talk, just talk about force. Okay. So I know the force will be double. That the E was on the alpha particle twice or double the force the electron. Compare only, uh, no need to explain, but I can explain that uh, this is because the magnitude of the alpha of charge is double alpha. And second one, we can say that the force on alpha is opposite direction. Force on electron. Why? Because the polarity or the sign. Alpha is opposite to electron. One extra footnote about this is that although the force is twice on electron, I mean twice on alpha, the acceleration of alpha is still less than electron. Miss why? Uh? Well, because the mass of alpha is very, very much more bigger than the mass of electron. A few thousand times. So you double the force got no meaning one because the mass of alpha is a few thousand times the mass of electron. Double, double, la, meh. Okay, so in case they ask you to explain, what about the acceleration? Or by acceleration, you can say, however, acceleration of alpha is still less than electron because the mass of an alpha particle is much greater than twice 
the mass of electron. Okay, F equal ma. Your mass so big now, you double the force, no point. I'm still going to accelerate slower. Okay, this one came out in other years, not this year, but it came out before, right? So if you are looking at the quark question, they tend to ask in objective, but sometimes if they ask in question seven or last question in paper two, they may ask similarity differences. They might ask you, oh, proton got what quark, neutron got what quark. That one, that one I think they ask too many times until they don't want to ask anymore. Or there's this particle, sigma plus, what are the composition? I think the type they ask until they don't want to ask already. So sometimes they will just put the particle inside some electric field and ask you to describe what happened. No? So this is become a chapter 17 question already. All right, so that's all you need to know. A lot of facts, facts about fundamental particles, about how we classify them. Hadron, which consists of quarks because they are heavy, proton and neutron. Leptons, which are electrons and neutrino, knowing the quark composition and know how to find the total charge. Okay, uh, understanding how to look at alpha, beta, gamma decay, especially from the perspective of this kind of graph. Uh, you may have to recall one of these equations sometimes. Sometimes you have to identify what are isotopes. And also don't forget, objective can ask you a statement question regarding the alpha scattering experiment. I can also ask in paper two lah. Okay, all of this can be asked in paper two for two, three mark or objective is as one mark. Okay, so expect about five marks, five to ten marks from this chapter, depending on how much they ask. Okay, that's it for nuclear physics.